Okay, class 12, uh, this video is to show you a demo of uh, an experiment to find the value of an unknown resistance. This is the unknown resistance here. Okay, we have a wooden cylinder on which we have wound wires and this wire has length 50 centimeters. So we've measured the length of the wire here. It's a 50 centimeters. So let me familiarize you with the uh, instruments first. So this is called a resistance box. So as you can see, it has different keys which can be of course plucked out and plugged in. Now whenever you use this instrument, what you need to do is you have to make sure that when you plug in the keys, you have to plug in the keys very tightly. And this resistance box is so to say a variable resistor whose resistance can be changed. So its range is from 0 0.1 ohms. If I, so you have the values written over here, different values written. And whichever key you plug out, so it'll have the resistance box will have that particular value of resistance. Like when I take this key out, it's 0 0.1 ohms. If I take this out, it's 1 ohm. And if I take this out, it's, its value will be 10 ohms. So this resistance box has range from 0 0.1 ohms to 10 ohms. So this is a variable resistor, which is called a resistance box. Now, this is the power source. Now, if you see a practical book, you will see the power source to be a dry cell, but we are not using a dry cell. Our power so source is this. This is also called an eliminator. This basically is a rectifier. Now, a rectifier is something which converts alternating current to direct current. Now, this of course, we are going to plug it in an alternating current source. So, that alternating current will be converted to a direct current by this particular device, which is also called an eliminator. It basically is a rectifier. You'll study about rectifiers in section C when we discuss uh, semiconductors. And by the way, this thing has different values. So when we rotate the knob over here, okay, so this gives me two volts, a power source, power of two volts. This gives me a power of three volts, four volts, and something like that. Okay, so depending on what voltage we want from the source, we can get it. So it has a range from 1.5 volts to 12 volts. This instrument is called a galvanometer. You can see a galvo written over here. Okay, so this is an instrument, mind you, which detects the flow of current. And we are going to use, we are going to use this in the experiment. All right, now this wooden board you have, okay, that you see, on this wooden board we have a meter rule attached. Also we have, what we have is, I don't know whether it's, it can be seen in the video or not. All right, we have a wire, a thin wire here, okay. This wire has a length of one meter or 100 centimeters. So we also have a wire which is fixed to this wooden board. So these are the basic things that we need for this experiment. Oh, one more thing. This particular instrument, this particular device, if we place on the wire at different points, we can place it on the wire at different points. Okay. So, and it can be move about, of course, this particular thing is called a jockey. Okay. Simply because it rides over the wire. Okay. And of course, these are some of the connecting wires we have. While using the connecting wires, you all need to be careful that you remove this layer of oxide formed here due to oxidation of course. Okay, so you use the sandpaper, this copper oxide or something formed of course due to oxidation since it's a copper wire. So we have to clean the surface so that when we connect the wires, the connection is done nicely. Okay, so you start getting this shine. So you need to clean the surfaces of the connecting wires and then you need to do the connection. So before we actually jump into the experiment, let us try to understand this picture. These rectangular strips are representing the metallic strips that are there on the meter bridge as you can see. So 
Here is where you have your resistance box connected. Let us call that P. Although it's written R, S, P, Q over here in the book, let us call this our resistance P. Oh, following this picture, of course. Okay, so P, Q, R is following this order itself. So this resistance box, therefore, will act as our P. There are these junctions, of course, in the meter bridge. So here is our unknown resistance Q. And in between P and Q, we have another junction from where the galvanometer is connected, as you can see in the picture. The other end of the galvanometer is connected to the jockey. So B is a jockey, so to say. And when the jockey, you place the jockey at some point, so this is the metallic wire, AC is representing the metallic wire. So when you place the jockey at any point on the metallic wire, one portion of the metallic strip will act as our resistance R and the other end of the metallic wire will act as our resistance S. And as you can see from this picture itself, at the junction of resistors P and Q, you have one end of the cell connected and at the other end of the cell is connected to the junction between Q and S. So, these are metallic strips which means this junction and this junction connecting resistance P and resistance R. So, they are all connected. So, what we have is, this is the DC source. So, one end of the DC source is connected to the junction between resistance P and resistance R. You can connect it here, you can connect it here, okay, or if you have a junction here, you can also connect here. So, DC source connected here means it is connected at the junction of resistors P and R. Likewise, the other end of the DC source is connected to the junction between Q and S. So, you see, this is our meter bridge and these are the metallic strips I was talking about. So, it is these metallic strips that connect these junctions which is connected to this junction and we have a metallic strip in between. Alright, so we have our metallic strips and we have a wire here. Okay, so our resistance box which we are saying is our resistance P is connected to these junctions and it is connected to the unknown resistance. So P is connected to Q. Q is our unknown resistance here. Now in between P and Q we should have a connection for galvanometer which is this. So we have the galvanometer connected as you can see and the other end of the galvanometer goes and gets connected to the jockey which is to be placed at different points on the wire so that we achieve the balance condition or when there is no current flowing through the galvanometer which is also called null point. In that case our galvanometer should not be showing any deflection mind you. So when we place our jockey at this point say for example at this point we achieve our uh, null point okay. So here is our jockey say here is our null point. So this end up to here is our R resistance R and the other end of the wire up to this point of course will be acting as our S. So in between the resistors P and R we should have one end of the battery connected. So I can connect one end of the battery over here also over here also okay I will rather connect it here I'll show, show you that. So the one end of power source will be connected to this point and since this is our resistance Q and this end of the wire this end of the wire is our S so in between Q and S the other end of the power source should be connected. So I can connect it here I can also connect it here I'll rather connect it here. So this is our power source I have set it at 2 volts as you can see and one end of it is connected to this junction here between our resistors P and R here and the other end of the power source is connected to this junction between our unknown resistance Q and this junction or the resistance S so to say. Now before we again actually start working with the instruments, let me help you with this small theory part here. 
Now we are seeing R and S are two different parts of the same wire mounted of course on the meter bridge. Now for any resistance R, we know it is given by resistance R is equal to rho L by A, where rho is something called the specific resistance of the resistor, L is its length and A its cross-sectional area. Now since R and S are two different parts of the same wire, so therefore the resistance of S is equal to rho into its length which is 100 centimeters minus L upon A. Since R and S are part of the same wire, so they will have the same specific resistance rho. They will have the same cross-sectional area A. Now if R is L, then the length of S has to be equal to 100 centimeters minus L because R plus S, that is the total length of the wire is 100 centimeters. Therefore, if one has length L, the other has to have length 100 centimeters minus L. Therefore, dividing R by S, we get this much. You can check the mathematics and we get R by S is equal to L divided by 100 minus L. Now, from the Wheatstone bridge principle, we know P by Q is equal to R by S. Now, since R by S itself is equal to this much, so therefore P by Q is equal to L divided by 100 minus L. And from here, therefore, we get the unknown resistance Q to be equal to P into 100 minus L divided by L. Now the value of P is known because whatever value of or whatever key we plug out from the resistance box that will be the value of the resistance of the resistance box or that is the value of P. Now we can measure L from the meter rule that is fixed on the meter bridge itself so thereby we can know 100 minus L also and from this equation therefore we can find the value of the unknown resistance Q. Now let us actually try working with the instrument. So we have our circuit complete now. You can see the resistance box is connected to this end. And by the way, uh, when you're doing electrical experiments, you have to make sure that all of your connections are done tightly. It has to be tight enough. You should not have any loose connections anywhere. And like I mentioned earlier, you have to make sure that all of the keys are plugged in tightly all of the keys it has to be plugged in the keys have to be plugged in tightly so right now you can see two written over here so I have taken out two ohms resistance our circuit is complete we have P we have Q our unknown resistance and the galvanometer is connected to the jockey so let me show you by passing the current so I have turned on the current and do make sure whenever you are not using the power source, make sure you turn it off immediately if you are not using it. All right. So when I place the jockey, you will see deflection on the galvanometer. So let me show you here. So if I place the jockey at one of the ends, okay, I'm going to place it there. You see there the needle of the galvanometer. It's deflecting towards our left hand side as you can see. Let me show you one more time. There. Okay. Now when I place the jockey at the other end now, opposite end, you see where it deflects. You see it deflects towards the right hand side. So when we place our jockey on the two ends on this side, it deflects on the left side as you can see there also. Let me show you. A close up of it there and when I place again on the right side so which this tells me this to check whether your circuit is correct or not so this tells me that my circuit is correct sometimes what happens is on placing the jockey at two ends at opposite ends it shows the galvanometer shows deflection on one end itself so this tells us that there is something wrong with the circuit all right, so whenever you place the jockey on the two ends of the wire, it has to show deflection at the opposite ends. So these deflections on two sides of the galvanometer when we place the jockey on two ends of the wire tells me that there is a point somewhere where the galvanometer will show no deflection. So I have to find that no deflection point. 
So it's deflection to deflecting towards the right. It's deflecting towards the left here. Okay, so which means I have to find a point where there is no deflection. So I have to look for that point. I have to look for that point. Alright, so here is my point of no deflection. So when I place my jockey over here, this tells me that the Wheatstone bridge is balanced now. The galvanic bridge is not showing any deflection here. Okay, so this is my null point or the balanced point. So at this point, so here the resistance box is my P, the unknown resistance is Q, so this end of the wire Okay, this left hand side of the wire up to where I have placed the jockey, this is my R and the other half, other end of the wire on the right hand side of the jockey is my S. So what I'll now do is I'll measure the length of R. The length of R is about 63 centimeters. Okay, so the length of S will be 100 minus 63 centimeters. Then after we substitute the values, we know the value of our known resistance, that is value of P, which is 2 ohms. So substituting these values, we get the value of the unknown resistance, which is Q. Let us show the calculation also. Therefore, we see that the value of P is 2 ohms, length of R is 63 centimeters, length of S is 37 centimeters. And thereby, the value of Q, after calculation, we find it to be 1.17 ohms. Now, for the other observation, what you will do is, you will change the value of P. You will make it 3 ohms or 4 ohms, that is of your desired value. Now, for every different value of P, you will obviously get the null point at different points. That is, the value of the length of R is going to change, and thereby the length of S will change. And you will get the, you will again calculate the value of Q. Now, what you will do is, for about five observations that way, you'll, you'll get different values of Q, which should be actually similar to this, and you'll then take the average of the values of Q. So that was, that will give us, so that will give us the value of the unknown resistance Q, and hence our experiment will be complete, which is to find the value of the unknown resistance using Wheatstone bridge principle.